Greetings and salutations, gamers. Welcome to Cast Co-op, the podcast in which three podcast hosts cast together. I am one of your hosts, Luke Lore, the insipid ghost and host of the Xbox Expansion Pass, which you can find on all your podcast services. Joined by two of my good friends, Mr. Ainsley Bowden and Joseph Moran. Ainsley Bowden, host of Seasoned Gaming Spitcast. How are you, sir? Good evening. Salutations. How are you? I do well, man. It is good to have you here. I feel like we just talked. Yes. Like we just talked. Uh, indeed, we did just uh, talk as you were on Xbox Expansion Pass uh, just a few days ago at the time of this recording to talk about Halo, which we will do today. Sadly, uh, having to well. tell you about Halo, which sucks. That's true. That is true. But such is the nature of betas. Yes. Uh, informed in the world of Halo Infinite is also our good friend, well, Mr. Badbit, don't, Joseph Don't Moran. overstate it. Don't overstate it. <laughs> Joseph no, Moran, no, no, host no. of no. The Trophy Room, a PlayStation Trophy. podcast. How are Actually, you, sir? Can I say something oh. before he even says hello? Yeah, I would love that. I actually Anytime give, he doesn't I, talk. <laughs> I actually want to give Joe props. Because. I, don't like that. I know, I know. I, I got to do it, though, because it's only right. Okay. He played very well at Halo this weekend. That's right. He did. He did. Yeah. That's right. He did. Yeah. He did well. He did well. He's, proud he's obnoxiously good at multiplayer games. I, I was proud of him. Yeah, I was proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my screwdriver today, boys, just for this conversation. We need that. Okay, that's good. I'm going to need yeah. that. I hope you got your cool. thermal paste because uh, this, this oh, show is going to be fire. This right. show is going to be fire. In this episode of Cast Co op, we're going to be I talking you, about <laughs> that Halo Infinite podcast, or that Halo Infinite beta. See, now you yeah. got me all thrown off. That Halo Infinite beta is on the docket. We'll be talking about how the indie games of 2021 are doing a good job of filling the gap for AAA. And we're going to talk about how the PlayStation 5 is a badly engineered system. It's a badly engineered system. I'm saying it. I'm here to say it. Uh, there's no fanboy here. That's what I'm saying. Oh, he's zooming in. He's zooming in. <laughs> we I'm got shocked. the effects. We got the effects. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Luke bus driver lore. I don't I don't I don't like that. I don't like that. You're suspended. You're suspended. Oh man. Um let's start off with the topic of the hour. What my social media social media feed was filled with this past weekend, Halo Infinite. You both got into that Halo Infinite beta. I know you're both raving about it, as are uh it's near universal at this point, which is pretty darn incredible, all things considered, uh, given the road that Halo Infinite has been on. Uh, Joe, yeah. people often in shows like this will call you the PlayStation guy. Admittedly, we play on all our systems, uh, but you have been a PlayStation and I'm sorry, you've been a Halo fan for 47 years. Uh, tell me a little bit about Halo and how that Halo Infinite beta went. Okay, so I've been about a Halo fan for about 20 years now. <laughs> All right, I could actually say that, not 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 joking. I've been a fan since the original Combat Evolved. Mm -hmm. um, fell off with Halo 4, actually. Uh, okay. Tried to get back on with Halo 5. Didn't click when it launched. Yeah. Uh, but then coming back to Halo 5 with the hype that was Halo Infinite, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm digging where the series has been. Overall, okay. there's never been a bad Halo game. There's only been good halo games and great halo games Agreed. halo infinite really feels to me it feels like if i'm shooting the br it kind of feels like two mm -hmm. uh it it the arenas feel a little bit like three especially in the uh the power-ups mm -hmm. uh kind of perfected the idea that they had in three with this one uh it feels smaller. It feels like an arena. I was never a fan of the Halo 4 maps, um, revisiting them in the Master Chief collection. And Halo 5 maps as well have not been my favorite. There's nothing, there's not one of them that I, I think of and go, oh my God, that's the map. <laughs> right. Right. There is no like Blood Gulch to me or Valhalla. Mm -hmm. um, Halo Infinite Man, every single map, well, two out of three of the maps I really like. So recharge is great. Um, the first map that I'm live I'm, fire. Live fire is great. Don't know how I feel about bizarre yet. And that's really the only negative thing I have to say about the beta is this one map I'm not the biggest fan of, but everything else so far and Ains, you'll say it, it's it's feeling good. It's feeling real good. So that's where I am right now, Luke. Feeling good. I'm like, okay. All right. So positive praise all around. If you're able to 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 nitpick at, at something and saying, you know, not quite so great uh, for you there. Ains, uh, 
I know that you are raving on it from our previous conversations, yeah. but for any listener that missed uh, Bitcast or XEP, uh, how all, dare all you. things positive. How yeah, dare you? A, how dare you? All things dare. positive. Yes. In fact, I think Joe said it well. Um, I, I told someone that this feels like a perfect combination of Halo 5 and Halo 2. And I mean that in the best way possible. It's modern. It's fast. Uh, the clambering is critical, right, to, to move up levels. Uh, there's a lot of verticality in the maps. But in, in ways that really, really matter from a competitive standpoint, it feels like classic Halo. And I mean that, again, in a really good way. Uh, all the weapons have punch. A lot of good balance in them. Uh, no mechanics. It, it's like refined, right? Like Halo 5 was excellent. And I still think Halo 5 is the best multiplayer has ever been in Halo. But it was complicated mechanically. There were things that just were added to the sandbox that didn't need to be added or didn't really add anything from a competitive standpoint. And they've, they've cleaned that up here. So it's, yeah, what Joe said is right. My biggest complaints about the beta are twofold. Um, and Joe and I played a lot together this weekend, so we kind of probably, you know, share some similar thoughts there. Yeah. Um, Bizarre, the third map is beautiful. There's a lot of cool jumps and, uh, again, verticality. Verticality is kind of a theme. Um, and, and, you know, ways to move around the map, but it's it's very centralized. Like, all the action takes place right in the center of it, which I've never been a fan of in maps because it just limits the I always feel like I I'm confused as to where to go. Right. Like that, like to me, or not confused, I'm apprehensive where to go because you move, it feels like a few feet in front of you once you're in a spawn and you're, you're in it. Like that's, that's the whole fight. Yeah. You have these two balconies overlooking yeah. each other in a kill, kill box yeah, right in the much. center. It yeah. feels like a Gears map, which yeah. Gears plays very differently. So it makes sense in Gears, but this, it just didn't feel that great to play. Um, and then my only other complaint, and this shows you how good it is because we're really nitpicking, right, is the melee range is too long. You can lunge kind of with your melee uh, mm -hmm. from a distance that I think, w I personally think they will tune that down because competitive players always complain about that. Um, right. The rest of the game just feels phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. Like, to, to put into perspective, right, we played, uh, Joe, I know you're up there with me. I mean, tens and tens, I told Luke, if not over 100 matches, right? probably easily um and that's a beta with a handful of maps against bots mm -hmm. like you know i mean it's the smallest slice of what halo infinite's going to be well that's that's where i want to kind of put a an asterisk next to a lot of this is the praise we're seeing came from a, a small user base they rolled it out to a good number of people but a lot of people excluded from the from the first beta as you would expect and that's not a complaint but all but like two hours of this multi-day experience were against bots. So you're yep. feeling success the entire time. Yeah. Um, what would you say to to the idea that maybe you guys are a bit biased because you felt success the whole time versus the frustration of getting just absolutely wrecked? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the coolest part in that beta was, A, I love the moment-to-moment -moment interaction with and communication between the team and the 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 beta testers mm -hmm. um first thing i do want to mention this is the best sounding halo period like it's just amazing. i've every gun has oomph to it man like shout out to the commando a gun you shouldn't be holding <laughs> down the trigger to when you're shooting and man it just feels so great um but we got to play against players and we were getting absolutely destroyed. It got There's sweaty real fast. <laughs> very sweaty. <laughs> and it still felt so good jumping back into the bot matches where it is like I'm rolling over these. Like, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it wasn't a challenge. And after a while, you think like, oh, I'm just playing against bots. Well, this is going to get boring, but... I mean, I was in a party with Ains till I think like two in the morning, like playing mm -hmm. like four hours straight. So it it, sh it goes to show that yeah, there's there's magic here in the mechanics. It, it feels really nice, and yeah, some of it may be the bots, and we'll see when we actually get player v player in mm -hmm. it for real this time, not just an hour. But mm -hmm. so far, it just it feels so fun to play. It's so rewarding to play mm -hmm. that it's not about winning. Because it, it would get boring if I was constantly winning too, so it it, it really is. There's there's a magic here. Yeah, I completely agree. You said it well, Joe. Um, that I think I played four or five matches against players, and I want to say 
one, I know one, two, lost two. I don't know if there was a fifth. Uh, in, in the two losses, they weren't pretty. I mean, yeah. there are some seriously good Halo players playing, mm-hmm. which you go to go to figure, right? These are your long-term insiders, probably a right. lot of good players. Um, and, and it just got, I think we lost one match like 50 to 13. Ooh. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it got rough real fast. Um, but we did win a couple as well. And I guess um, that's going to be Halo. Halo has a high skill gap. I think the high, I think the skill gap in this game is going to be even bigger mm-hmm. than Halo Five uh, and especially Four, which is going to be uh, which only emphasizes the importance of the bots and the academy and getting new players the capability to practice right. Mm-hmm. And let's not forget too, um, you know, we say things like, uh, "Is it only going to be fun playing against bots for certain people?" Well, probably there are those people who just want to win every game, right? Yeah, but sure. you can play against bots every game. There, there's mm-hmm. bots in you know custom games. There's bots in Academy. You can set up any games you want. So if it's one of those things where you just want to play super casually, then by all means. But um, I think the combination, even the, even the games that got really, really challenging with high-level players, those aren't the type of players that your average player is going to play when they go into matchmaking this fall, right? Those are going to be your guys who are in – you know, platinum, diamond, onyx ranked arena matches, you know, yeah. not your social big teams or casual games. I also want to mention this as I walk away from from this beta uh, is two words, mobility <laughs> and momentum. Uh, that's something you don't hear a lot in Halo. Mobility wise, it's very slow. Um, and with, you know, Games like Call of Duty implementing Sprint, there's always been that debate of, should there be Sprint in Halo? The way that you build your momentum in Halo this time around, there is a Sprint, but it's really, the animation's there to trick you like you're going way faster than you actually are. Mm -hmm. But there's a cool mechanic where you where you slide and jump, where the slides while you're running, it, it, it builds this cool rhythm that you have when you're navigating uh, the maps. It just feel like you're you're building momentum to the next cool play when you engage someone you're you're pouncing on them to attack it's Mm -hmm. it's a really good feeling that i think is going to break up the monotony of of a lot of halo making it fresh without breaking what is the main tenets of halo so joe's on fire tonight (laughs) he's on fire tonight this guy's Um, a thinker I, he's got it man uh yeah the sprint debate has always been a huge one i despise it um but yeah, what what they've kind sprint of measured or the debate? Oh I, no, I think sprint has to be in Halo. Okay, Very, good. Like it has to be in. But right. to Joe's point, the the gap between moving and sprinting in this one is smaller, right? The the base movement speed is faster, so you can basically navigate the map with your weapon ready without sprinting and be successful. Like you, mm-hmm. it's not like Halo Three where it feels like you're moving at two miles an hour. You know what I mean? And can't move. Um, mm-hmm. But the, the advantage of sprinting in this is, yes, it's slightly faster. So if you are trying to get to a weapon or get to an equipment piece, you you can get there faster. Um, but also it enables, as Joe said, you can only slide if you're sprinting, run and slide. And that slide in this game is used in various ways to keep keep your momentum and do kind of special jumps and, uh, you know, movement. Uh, you've already seen some videos probably on Twitter and other social media about it. So I think when the pros get their hands on this game and we start to see what the top players can do, they're really going to find creative ways to use that. And it, it's a good balance between not sprinting and sprinting. Yeah. All right. So you guys have brought, dropped a lot of high level stuff. Like in my mind, I'm hearing a lot of things that uh, a lot of casual players probably are not going to consider Sure. Uh, when it comes to halo infinite. And that is the approach I want you to take this now. Right. Mm-hmm. Is the game fun enough to be free to play and keep a player base if we remove our our 20 years of playing Halo and our love for the franchise and whatnot. Is the game fun enough to compete alongside other free-to-play standards like Warzone or Destiny or Fortnite? I'm gonna say yes. And I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna say, and that's me being level-headed. Now I'm gonna be a bit of a fanboy here. <laughs> and if it remains that quality like you know the servers don't absolutely melt come Mm -hmm. whenever this game releases if i'm call of duty i'm nervous because i think (laughs) halo is really bringing it this year unlike anything we've seen and it will be on more platforms than ever 
uh, you know, for for a Halo launch as well, right? Mm-hmm. So this is this thing's gonna be on PC. You know, uh, a lot of people are gonna be checking this out. And to you know, to quote Paris Lilly, uh, oh. his kid who was not interested in the slightest day one, you saw even his kid got sweaty playing it <laughs> on day two. So I think there's something here. If it ca- if it captures that youthful audience, mm-hmm. that that battle bus, um, <laughs> it because Halo's gonna need it. I, I think I think we got something. That's the bus I want to be on. I'll say that right now. I'll say it right now. Uh, the um, uh, well, I hold, think, Ains, before you answer, before you answer, this youthful idea you interrupt me. I'm so That's sorry. I, I'm I profusely apologize. But from the bus, I'm looking out the window. Uh, yeah, this yeah. youthful approach is no important. <laughs> oh boy, uh, is is absolutely the key to Halo's relevance. That is why Halo has fallen apart uh, in the last few years because hardcore fans have known that Halo 5 has been a, a pretty decent thing, all things considered. Halo 4, a great story in and of itself. But I distinctly remember an article I read in Game Informer back when I was in college, a long time ago, about uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the first one, very first one. And the question was asked if they were concerned. I believe they were launching alongside a Halo something. And... They were asked if they were nervous about Halo and they were just like, no end of article. I wonder if maybe this is, this is, is uh, a coming back of sorts because it was the youths that brought call of duty to its huge numbers. Uh, And and I'm curious if that's going to be the case there. Uh, Ains, do you see enough there? Emote wise, fun, silliness, art wise, while still, still being Halo, keeping the core of Halo in there. <laughs> it's I not think, a fair um, question. Yeah, I think there's a lot to unpack here, uh, and a lot of it is speculation. I think, um, you know, if you would have asked me a couple months ago, I would have said no. Uh, mm-hmm. I would always answer that, and, and I always say this is that Halo's skill gap between low and high is very broad, right? And it's a very hard game to get into and understand the mechanics of uh, without getting crushed in multiplayer. And when you get crushed early in multiplayer, it it removes the will to continue for a lot of people. Right. Um, I I don't know if that's changed. Uh, In fact, like I said already, I think the skill gap in infinite is going to be higher than five. Uh, Now they're going to do things like we said, bots, academy, other things, training to kind of acclimate you to the game. But it's still not a game where you just spawn with a weapon and point and shoot and do well. You, it's just never going to be that game. That's not Halo. Um, it wouldn't be Halo otherwise. Right. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the thing is now is that this preview was so good. Um, and I saw so many people playing it endlessly, like we've already said, just against bots, bringing new players in, seeing an excitement in the air that we have not seen for Halo in many years. Um yeah. I'm starting to think they may be able to somehow pull off the impossible. And there's a, there's a couple other reasons I think that too. One, I was actually reading some long posts from prior Halo pros uh, that were big in Halo 5 HCS in 2015 through maybe t- early 2017 when the game launched. Mm-hmm. And they were posting clips from Infinite and they were telling the story of how HCS kind of fell apart for Halo mm-hmm. 5. Now, HCS? For oh, I'm sorry. Halo Championship Series. So this is the esports league for Halo, right? Okay. It was very big in about 2016, and it kind of just fell off. Um, there's an entire team now at 343 dedicated with former pros to making HCS successful again, and they have a new partnership in place as well for broadcasting. That's this cool. is going to be a big thing. Um, That's really cool. Yes. It's also, as we all know, it's free to play. It's also on PC, and it's cross-play. And for the first time, I think, at any competitive game I've seen, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, they've already announced that the Pro League, HCS again, is going to be fully cross-play, PC, console, mouse, and keyboard all together, which I don't think has been done before. That's and the weird. Reason, it that's is weird. weird. The reason I think that's important, again, if they can pull it off, is that it's basically making one Halo community. Whereas mm-hmm. most games separate uh, all kinds of different ways, whether it be platform, input, all these other things. Now on console, if we're playing, right, we don't have to play against mouse and keyboard. It'll be input-based if we want. Thank God. But mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. So I, I only bring all these things up to say that 343 is thinking in a holistic way about 
the success of Infinite that I don't think they have before. I think they've learned a lot of lessons over the past near decade now since Halo 4 launched. Mm -hmm. um, and this extra time they've had has also benefited them to make sure this game is truly ready to go. Um, I think there's probably enough, especially if you look at 12 on 12 big team, where you can more kind of goof off and have fun than what we were playing in competitive. I think um, there's enough there that will uh, capture the uh, the thought process of new players. Um, it, it just plays well. I'm confident. Honestly, I'm 100% I'm confident right now in saying that this game will launch better in a better state and in a more fun-to-play state than both Battlefield and Call of Duty this year. That's yep. that's my bet. So you're suggesting that perhaps a year delay for a game as opposed to rushing one out the door <laughs> is a smart thing to do? <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> crazy, right? Looking at, looking at you, Avengers. And, um, and, and again, like we talked about this on XCP, not to keep going here, but this is a gigantic game in the sense that no other game is delivering as much as this game's delivering, right? It's got an open world campaign. It's got a gigantic multiplayer suite. It's got a pro league. It's got Forge. It's got custom games. It's got bots. It's got, I mean, there's so much going into this game um, mm -hmm. that I think, you know, just creates all sorts of different avenues for people to interact with. And the environment now, even though it's only been six years, which doesn't sound like a lot of time, the environment now in the gaming community now compared to 2015 when Halo 5 launches, massively different, different, mm -hmm. excuse me, massively. Uh, mm -hmm. streamers are huge, right? I mean, YouTube is huge. And and I just foresee a lot of people um, sharing clips and gameplay because this game has that capability um, to really, you know, kind of push this forward in the, the mindset of what you were referring to, Luke. So that was a huge, long-winded answer. But I think, um, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a very successful game. I, I'll definitely say it's going to be the most successful Halo to date. The ambition that they are showing with Halo Infinite is something that only a first party can do and that only a first party should do. If Battlefield was going to these lengths, I would wonder why. But if it came to the God of War Ragnarok equivalents of, of, of this level, that's something they need to do. You need stuff like this in your exclusive Pantheon. Uh, and it's nice to see Microsoft getting it because Sea of Thieves, it took a long time to get to that level. Um, a lot of the PlayStation I mean, exclusives in PS3 era didn't have this level of. Yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Please take and, over. And, and I, and I got to say, this game is important not just for 343, but for Microsoft. This game does need to hit out of the gate. And you, you said it right. There's a lot that, that has to go into Halo uh, th this time around, and it has to hit immediately yeah. because that stigma of Microsoft games being broken at launch mm -hmm. will be broken if this game is. Bam! On day one, everything's works. Now, everything won't work. It's you know, <laughs> you know, this is a huge, massive undertaking. There will be you know, server crashes here or there. It's it's gonna be the multiplayer is going to be free. But I'm saying if it's mostly stable, that that first week is pivotal. That's gonna change the conversation, and I think that's what Microsoft is taking all the time in the world. Uh, yeah, game, so. and the reason I said I'll bet that Halo will land in a better state at launch is for that reason. And one. Call of Duty, we already know behind the scenes, is a mess this year. And it's we, we've we never gone this far into the year in the past like decade plus without seeing Call of Duty. And yet we still haven't seen it this year, which automatically tells you that something's amiss, right? Um, Battlefield hasn't launched successfully, I don't know if ever. I've been there, I've been there at launch since Battlefield 3, which was Same. 15 years ago, maybe, uh, when we went over Battle 3. And that launch was broken. So, so was four, so was five. Uh, they just, they can't launch well. So I'm hoping they do, don't get me wrong. And I love Battlefield, but I, I'm just far more confident in Xbox understanding to Joe's point, how important this Halo is and how important launch is and them being ready uh, on day one to hit it out of the park. And if campaign hits with Chief as well, um, and, and to about success of Xbox, if Forza Horizon hits like it has hit, Horizon's been spectacular. Yeah. If those two things hit in that, for you know, I hate to go to meta, but if they're in that 85, 90 meta range, both of them this fall, uh, and there are a couple bangers, then, um, you know, these are <laughs> <laughs> then uh, that's it's going to it be a huge, boon, a huge boon. Yeah. For, it's uh, funny. For Xbox. It's, it's 
interesting to me because Halo will, I think Halo is dead if this doesn't land. I really do. Stop it. And I, I it, I call I'm calling it how I see it. And I hate that. Cause like, I mean, you can't really see behind me, but like, you know, I got a lot of Halo stuff all back there. Um, and it, it's nice to see it going in the right direction. And it, the delaying a project is expensive. It's difficult, but it looks like a lot of people are starting to wake up to the idea and shout out to cyberpunk for being the most recent big game to kind of remind executives and investors of that. Uh, Ragnarok, I don't think is going to come out in 2022. I really don't. No. Um, for, Forbidden West, I think is a 2022 game. But I think a lot of games are going to be taking the time to get it right because damaging the brand in a world of streamers is far more negative, far more negative than otherwise. And don't forget, that, look look back. Microsoft bought Ninja, the biggest streamer of his time, because they thought Halo would land at a certain spot. Remember? Like, yep. that was a thing that they were trying to angle with their marketing. God, I'm so glad it didn't work out the way it did. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Joe, did you have any other thoughts on that one before we move on? No, I want to fight over the screwdriver I got. <laughs> you ready to do this? You ready to yeah. do this? Okay. We're ladies and gentlemen, let me just let you know we're gonna have a very rational conversation after this one about some of the sure. incredible indie games that have come out this year and that are set to come out this year. But before we do that, it's very important that we recognize a few things. One, there's a lot of good news floating around Xbox right now, thus we've had a chance to cover it. Okay. Two, PlayStation's dead, and we need to <laughs> recognize it. Oh, okay? okay. I mean, it's not a PlayStation. I mean, this is an Xbox podcast. <laughs> Whatever. PlayStation's dead because I don't yeah, know if you I guys know. saw this. They uh -huh. finally, finally gave the option to expand that storage. And you need a freaking NASA degree <laughs> to, to figure out how to put this SSD in there. Joe, uh, go ahead and defend this this mess of a system. Go for it. No, I want you to attack it. Actually, I want to. I want to know it? why you're so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, go for it. Drink your little, drink your little Power sippy smoothie. sip. Yeah. Go for it. Spinach in there. So, yeah. I'll time it. I'll time it. How about that? You go I'm, I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna lean back with my Atari shirt and let you guys talk about bad hardware. <sighs> Thank you. Continue. <sighs> the PlayStation Five is an objectively <laughs> badly engineered system. It's too big. They had way too much that they were trying to do with good ideas that led it to be uh, huge. Hey, focus on me, sir. Focus on me. Okay? okay. There's a reason it is shaped the way it is, trying to push out all that hot air. And hot air is what you get when, you, when you're looking at that PlayStation design. Because, <laughs> hey, focus, focus. Real talk, it's ridiculous when you've got a system that's that big and, and obtruse and they had to stick on. I don't know what you're doing. Show me. Are you building a PC TurboTax here? Yeah, I would, Luke, I want you to build me a thing. To, to, and you're not, it not, took me 25 to seconds. I'm trying to talk here. I'm trying. This is my time. You see, get, re, re, yeah, uh, but then you it? have to put it back on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's the well, thing. then let's, here we go. Let's Keep just put going. this on right here. Okay. The PlayStation 5 is too big, it's too uh -huh. hot. Right, it's two. It's got those sure. weird collars on there, but really and truly, it is a badly engineered system that was rushed out because you have to take a screwdriver off of your system mm -hmm. to insert an extra memory device that you could buy oh, from man. anywhere. I don't know what these third party people are making. Sure, Where's my sure. proprietary everything? Has the oh, Vita man. taught us anything? Oh, goodness, really true. Okay, so joking aside, I think it's a terrible idea that people have to unscrew parts of their system to change where the stand goes on a playstation and we're 5 done. they had a bat they had a playstation 5 upside down in a commercial multi-million dollar commercial it's upside down they don't even know Her which way is up herman holst and then, had his upside down that's right that's right and then then in order to expand the storage i gotta screw stuff in and out i gotta make sure i got the right phillips head is this a phillips head part two five six one Buy buy a special thing. Don't get the one with without heat sink. You need to have a heat sink on there, folks. I'm telling you, I've been gaming 47 years. Heat sink will kill it. Seconds. Look, it's a bad it's a bad solution. It's a solution which is awesome. It's a bad solution that you need to unscrew need parts to do of it your again? system to do it. It's just a bad solution, and I don't know why you're defending it. All joking aside, I don't know why you can't acknowledge that a launch version of a system is badly engineered uh -huh. in this part. I'm glad we've got a solution. But the PS3 was a bad, uh, badly engineered system at launch. The Xbox 360 was atrocious at launch. 
I mean, the failure rate at that was just absurd. The Xbox One launch, a badly engineered system. I don't know why we why this is so hard for you to just acknowledge that it's bad that you Here's have to unscrew you parts to of your system. Luke. Here's what you need to acknowledge. Uh-huh. All right. PlayStation went to make a console. They went, if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach uh-huh. to making uh-huh. a console to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. You take a yeah. look at the PS3, you take a look at the PS4, all the iterations of. They've always given this type of solution to you of like, hey, if you want to expand not a good the solution. storage, you can. Here it is if you want it. Most people are not going to expand their storage of their consoles. Just not. Right? Fair. So they went in sure. with this solution saying, hey, I know the hardcore players are going to want this. We're mm-hmm. giving them this option that they know and that they're aware of. Mm-hmm. And this is it. Now, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a great solution. It's I don't think it's an awful bad, solution. Bad solution. I think it's a it fine is a solution, one. though. Yeah. It's a, it's- because look. Well, these kids don't tell you. This is where I'll get all fanboyish and talk about <laughs> shit I don't quite understand. Tell is me about that, the paste. <laughs> is that the the driving side of the PlayStation 5 is incredibly fast, and it needs to match those speeds. And like Mark Cerny whispered in our little ears back in March is that he was waiting for these drives to come out so that he mm-hmm. could give them to us. So mm-hmm. they made a console of what they've always done. If an A broke, don't fix it approach. A very safe bet. When it comes to the Xbox design, it's immaculate. I think it is possibly the best des- engineered, designed, whatever console there's ever been. Series X and Series X. Or sorry, Series S. Because they had something to prove. Because mm-hmm. every launch Xbox kind of sucks, big right? Time. 360, an engineering disaster. The oh, Xbox yeah. One was a big, giant, fat uh, VCR. <laughs> so they yes. had something to prove. The PlayStation team didn't have anything to prove. So they go out there to Seagate. They say, hey, let's partner up. You'll get an exclusivity of this drive for X amount of time. If you help us with the R&D of this 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 memory unit, they agree. They get this little doodad that plugs right in. It's a better solution. It's a great solution. It's a more convenient solution. Yes. Yeah, the Xbox one. It yeah, is also too expensive. You meant Xbox. Yeah. You, meant, you yeah, said PlayStation. Sorry, I meant, okay. I meant you Xbox. Meant, it's also too expensive. It's also way too expensive. Yes, to keep going. and it's something for you can terabyte. absolutely wait for. Yeah, and yes. you, it's, it, both of that's these the things. That's the price of that kind of storage. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter for a no, console. I know. Store. I'm just saying that's the yeah. price of that kind of storage. That's just what it is. Yeah, and, and, and so with that, that, we're having. Hold, hold on one sure. sec, Joe. I just want to caveat because because Ains, we were very heated. Like we're joking now, but we were very heated <laughs> the other night. The premise of this argument is a matter of where consoles fall and PCs do not. Yeah, don't right? ever attack my fucking son. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, your son's great, but your your daughter looks terrible when she's got a disc drive on her. Um, oh. Whoa! I'm sorry, whoa. it's a gross thing. It's, it's back there. It's back All there, right. but I'm glad because it's bulletproof. And, you know, and here's so the thing. Big. Here's the thing. The the thing that's awful about this is Sony's verbiage, right? The way that they've talked about it is bad because it does it does sound like you need a goddamn degree in physics to, to figure it out and really it's just like buy a western digital drive <laughs> bam you're done right like yeah. they don't have the recommended here's the things you need uh, mm-hmm. uh list of, of hard drives and i think that's where they they went wrong here um it's the verbiage that sucks this is probably one of the easiest ways of getting to your storage ever on a, on a playstation i think the only one that beats it is probably ps3 uh, one of the PS3s where all you need to do is screw in the back, pull out the panel, pull out the hard drive. You should not that, have to screw anything in on a console as a but solution. But here's the thing: again, most people they're not us. Not they're doing... not. They're not. They're not doing any of this. So when You're right. people go, "Oh, this is a this is a disaster," or whatever, it's like, nah. To me, it's not. To me, this is just a fine solution for those who care, and for those who care, it's the hardcore audiences that do. Because really, why do you need a ter- two terabyte hard drive on here? But the serious so, element, well, you do need a two terabyte. The, the games are too big right now for, for the I mean, an additional. Oh, okay. So it, that two all my argument is, is that it's bad. It's a bad design. Like you shouldn't have to unscrew stuff in a console space in the console space to expand your memory. You shouldn't have to Xbox is a solution with that velocity thing. I like it. I like mm-hmm. it a lot, but it's too expensive and I'm not buying one at that price. So okay. it's not perfect. It's a better solution, but it, I think it's a bad system when you have to screw and unscrew parts of your system just to stand it upright or just to 
uh, expand your memory. I just think it's My a bad son move. doesn't need a goddamn stand, all right? He's standing right tall right here. Look at this. Look at that beautiful SG shirt in the back that doesn't fit me. Don't <laughs> don't acknowledge that. Acknowledge this. Oh, doesn't need a stand. It, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I Ains, what do you feel about this, man? What yeah, Ains, we're hey, joking. Ains, what do you Ains, got? What are your thoughts? Uh, what are your just, thoughts, Ains? You've been gaming. You've been gaming for what? Forty-seven years. Sixty-seven years. Sixty-nine years. There we go. Uh, there we go. What are your thoughts 60. on expandable storage? <laughs> <laughs> We've already talked about it for too long. Um, huh? It uh, it is. I agree. From a console perspective, people expect plug and play. That's what I expect from a console. That's why I game on consoles because I don't like dealing with crap with my PC. However, mm -hmm. Joe's right. Most people won't even know this exists that have a PlayStation. Um, if they do, and they're the type of person that says, how do I expand my storage in a PS5? If they're that type of person, then the process is pretty straightforward. And I think it's only going to get easier as time goes on because these drives by next year, your standard NVMe ssds will be this fast right they just haven't caught up yet um mm -hmm. so it'll get easier and easier as time goes on um so I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to it like yeah i don't think it's the best design but it, it impacts so few people this is not going to have a serious impact on on anybody that is, really that is not so, what reddit told me <laughs> <laughs> I i've had people article. reach out to me like xbox guys i don't know why yeah. Like, what do you think about this? I'm like, well, first of all, why does it matter what I think about this? And second yeah. of all, yeah, it's not a big deal. Can we please stop making this a big deal? I agree. It's not the best design. Completely agree. Um, yeah. Plug it. It should be plug and play. They could have done mm -hmm. better. There's a, there's quite a few things on the PS5's design they could have done better. Um, but exactly to the mass market, to the to the people globally that are buying PS5s, they don't think about this stuff. Yeah. This is this is a social media argument. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And also, let me tell you, I have. That's the littlest, the smallest complaint. It's not even a complaint with me when it comes to the hard drive. It's the UI that ha took a step back with the PS5. I agree. Yeah. That it looks like with this beta that is out, uh, fixes a lot of those things. Now, all I need is just if I hold the PlayStation button in the center of the dual sense, I can yes. turn off. I do that every machine. time and it just beeps at me and I'm like, oh my yeah. God. Like, oh, it drives me nuts. Again, it Can looks like they're fixing a lot of things, and I think the the thing that's hurt PlayStation this year, and the only thing generally I think that's hurt PlayStation this year, you guys will agree, is their communication hasn't been on point at all because they're just lagging behind because of the, the Rona, you know? Um, I think that, that company is in a bit of a disarray right now because, look, when it, when it invests hundreds of millions of dollars uh, from from the outset of this, you know, global panorama that we're living in, you could tell that they weren't prepared for this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it sounded good on paper at the time, like, oh, man, they're giving the, all their employees all these computers. But it's like, oh, wait, no, they did not have the infrastructure and they had to build it and, and release a console at the same exact time. So, yeah, I think they're lagging behind the communications department and the PR department is, is currently on fire because honestly, goodness, <laughs> they have not been clear with us. And it sucks because if there is a console that has shown me this next generation so far, it is my PlayStation. And mm -hmm. it, it it's it's funny with to me where with, with like haptics or Ratchet and Clank, where, where just you in general. Action? haptics ratchet and clank returnal demon souls like they've given me w what i think next gen should be and with that it still feels like xbox has the good news because they're constantly on point with their communication even mm -hmm. if they haven't shown me until halo now i'm a believer that mm -hmm. what the next gen is all about with them um, that's, that's, that's pretty much my only complaint though, is just the communication. This there. is not even a joke beyond the UI and beyond the storage, which I already said, I don't care about. Um, and, and maybe I don't care cause it's, I primarily do play on my series X. So storage is less of a concern on my PS5. I, <laughs> my biggest complaint with the PS5, give me better thumbsticks on the controller. I, I can't really? stand the dual sense thumbsticks. Please. I've never heard that as a main, mm, as like what? a mainline complaint. Really, that's not a regular they're the, complaint I've heard. Well, they're the same thumbsticks as the DualShock Four, and mm -hmm. the DualShock Four ain't good. Um, mm -hmm. 
So the dual sense well, is awesome. Similar design. They're they're a little different in, yeah. in the texture on on the. Well, they outside. yeah. Continue. I mean, they have, they have they have a different texture on the outer rim, but the yeah. the, <laughs> the, the depth and everything else is the same. Anyway, just I'm again competitive player, man. Give me give me better options. Even if they okay. sold it, like give me an elite option on the PlayStation. Say, would you want an elite controller? Or do yes. you want the back paddles? Ooh, b- before you answer, I would yeah. throw all the haptic BS from PlayStation and the, the that we know Xbox is investigating. I would throw all of that out in favor of paddles as a standard Ooh. on both, both consoles. You know, the I funny mean, thing is, I'm one of those weird players who I, I adore my elite. I don't use the paddles. Why did I'm, you buy an elite controller? Yeah, what's the point? You because fool. the no. <laughs> Because the thumbsticks, I use a tall stick on the right and a low okay. stick on the left for aiming. Um, and the the movement on them is much better. The triggers are much better. Just the action of your basic things is just way, way better. So. See, for me, I would actually say, as much as I like the dual, the, the sorry, the Elite controller, it's broken too many times on me, uh, which I'll always hold a grudge with. So you I beat actually your do controllers up though. I found that that's the case. Everybody's like, "What are you doing with your controller?" And I. I Maybe it's on me and my gorilla hands, but <laughs> uh, the back button attachment, I actually preferred over spending 200 bucks. If I could spend 20 bucks, put it on the back of my dual sense mm. and it gives me the same functionality. I'm all in. Give, I, that's what I actually want the most out of PlayStation right now. Give me a goddamn right after the, the press and hold on the PlayStation button. Give me a goddamn back. You want a back button. I want a, I want a dual sense elite Yeah, where you can, you can use. Like they should do it like the Astro, where you can move the thumbstick to uh, offset if you want to. Oh, modular. Yeah. yeah, give me that on PlayStation. I'd be happy. That's why when I can, like I'm playing Bloodborne again. I, th- I think I told you that I'm using my Nacon, my Nacon Pro, because mm. that controller is amazing. Yeah. Way more comfortable than the DualSense. Um, see, for me, I am I am the weirdest gamer because everybody's like either off or you know same access sticks, whatever they call them. To me, I'm like, you just put a controller in my hand and I'm going to do good. <laughs> like, it really doesn't matter. Picky. Yeah, I'm very yeah to me, I'm like, whatever. I used to be like offset sticks, but then I, I picked up the dual sun, or sorry, dual shock four and I couldn't, didn't look back. But I have no problems me. with the, the parallel or the offset. It does not bother me either. Here's the thing. Here's a, here's the thing. And shout out to our fro, uh, friend Mo because he really pointed this out. I love that you color, know, by the way. It's amazing. It's, it's a, a good, good color. One. Here's the thing. Yeah, this is why I don't want haptics in my Xbox controller. This thing, how much it's gonna cost to repair it? <laughs> nuts. Is this a joke? I don't know. Is this a joke? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a joke oh, amongst yeah. friends, so yeah. you're out of it. Imagine All if right. it's a, a dual sense elite to repair that. Oh, oh, oh my oh, goodness! Don't even get it. me. Don't. Nah. Yeah. Don't yeah, you have to. Started. I'm gonna get a master's in engineering, I think, before yeah. I attempt to. Well, before if once you get it, you can change your storage on a PS5. Um, uh, tell me this joe you said you felt like you get a next gen experience now current gen but like you know the the next gen experience from your playstation 5 versus your series x i am curious what is doing that i guess you mentioned some games uh, some of them are are like ps3 games like demon souls like i don't know that 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 sells me returnal doesn't sell me but my next gen experience didn't come from miles Mm. Uh, the the haptics at the time felt a little gimmicky, which I was scared to tell okay. people for a good while, um, because everybody was raving, right? Um, but next gen for me has been things like smart delivery. It's been UI refinement. No games yet, yeah. um, but like because I'm playing a lot of the same stuff I played last gen, right? Yeah. Miles is a PS4 game, and sure. it looks better. So I'm seeing glow ups, but it's been smart delivery and UI that has felt next gen ish to me on like OLEDs and stuff. What what, what yeah. what's the difference? What am I missing? Well, two things. I think haptics do play a large role in it. There are people that are anti-haptics until, don't worry, they realize that the Elite Series 2 has them. Uh, But, (laughs) you know, to me, I think, yeah, the adaptive triggers, the haptic, the dual sense in general is is the next-gen thing you can feel, which is Mm -hmm. what most people are going to get because, like, it's about senses. That's why graphics are always pushed because you can see the difference. Uh, with the PlayStation mm-hmm. Five, you're hearing and you're feeling the difference. So mm-hmm. for for me, it's a it's the dual sense compatibility of it. It's also the speed. So you bring up du- uh, Demon Souls, the where I go back from the hub world to a you know a zone 
is crazy fast. It's like less than three seconds and I'm, and I'm, I'm in that level. Like there's no mm-hmm. looking at my phone. Uh, when it comes to Ratchet and Clank, th- playing with the riffs and you're just, you're just there, you're jumping from area to area instantly. That's, that's where I find the next gen features going into Returnal as well. There is not a single load time in that game is, is nuts. And it, it, breaks it down to like there are just animations where people think it's a loading screen like getting into your ship uh in insomnia in in ratchet and clank and insomniacs actually pointed out the animation's just for aesthetic like that's not Mm. loading anything that level's already loaded Mm. and that's the thing that is that it blows my mind about it it's about the speed in which i'm gaming the less time i'm looking at twitter is really what the revolution is here for me ains were like nine months into this gen. Yeah. Uh, what's next gen for you? Um, I think it's a lot of what you both mentioned. I, 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 I'm like 50, 50 between, uh, what Joe said and not. (laughs) So I do think the haptics, uh, impressed me more than I thought they would. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I said, I, I said pretty vocally that I thought it was funny that PlayStation was hyping a controller before the console. Um, and that I would be surprised if these haptics are used going forward from third parties. So, so far we've seen some third party support. It's a little more basic at times than some of the first party support. So we'll see how that does, but I, I am impressed at the quality of it. Um, I know everyone says it, but Astro bot just kind of blew me away, right. With what it can actually do. And I'm curious to see what they do going forward. Um, I've said, the funny thing is I've said all along, and I don't know if that's been topped. Maybe Flight Sim has topped it now, no matter what you think of that game. It's an absolute showcase of a game. Um, I was previously saying before Flight Sim that I think Demon Souls and um, Gears 5 were the premier games to really show off the new hardware, both. Uh, If you play, play either of those on Series X or PS5, they're both just absolutely unbelievable. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a pure definition of what next gen has been for me. I can tell you one thing. Um, you know, people say, I've seen a lot of people say things like, um, uh, next gen hasn't felt very next gen, you know, over the past several months. And what I tell those people is that's fine. Go plug in your one X and play on that. And it's like, Oh God, I'm not doing that. Well, then why not? Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously there's benefits to these new systems. And I think a lot of it is just usability. Um, to Joe's point, everything's much faster, you know, just from boot up to launching games, quick resume on Xbox is what I call a next gen feature, right? I've, yeah, you can just see you have multiple games running and bounce between them. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. PlayStation five doesn't have quick resume, but it has like a suspend feature like we know, mm-hmm. but again, it's so much faster, you know, like I could leave demon souls on and be back in it within seconds. Um, you know, switching the games and just all those things, uh, 60 frames, almost all the games we're playing now are 60 frames. Um, even a lot of the ones from last gen. So that's just a huge upgrade right there too. So there's a lot of little things that add, I think add up to a better experience. Yeah, I think you're right. One of the, it's really cool that we get to play cross gen. It's really noticeable when somebody's in your party and they're on last gen hardware. Hmm. Like I see it in loading screens in a couple different games that are, are cross gen. And it's just like, Whoa, what are we waiting on? What are we waiting on? <laughs> I remember when one of our friends, uh, Suddy, uh, hat was still on his one X Luke would always like yell at him being like, Hey, poor, get more money buy a series <laughs> X. And I thought that was a little out of line and so did Suddy. <laughs> But he really was adamant about it, and you got to give props to Luke's heartlessness in that situation. M- meanwhile, in the background, Suddy's dialysis machine is beeping at yeah. us, and I'm like, Suddy, turn it down. We're playing a game. It's like new Xbox before new blood, Suddy. <laughs> All right? Yeah, actually, it's funny you mentioned that because we did uh, <laughs> Borderlands. Says. We did four-player Borderlands with my family, and my, my son was on the One X. The rest of us were on Series X, and it would be like we'd be in the game already, like killing enemies and looting. And he's like, yeah, I'm almost loaded in, like – you know um so yeah things like that i think just heighten the experience we're gonna i mean it's it's early right we people forget that we don't i honestly believe that we have seen more improvements to games in the how many months has it been 10 months since launch than we normally do um because games have always taken you know a year or two at least to really start to stretch hardware 
But in this case, because of all the backwards compatibility and improvements to everything else, especially on the Xbox side, we're seeing more improvements than we normally see. Like I said, we're we're suddenly go play like Assassin's Creed Valhalla on a One X or a PS4, and then go play it on your Series X or PS5. It's a night and day difference. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Agreed. Night and day. Also, and here's the thing, too. I I, and like, to... no, go for it. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I was I was gonna note Piece of shit. night and day, um, jerk, is that you just got an OLED, Joe? Oh, yeah. Since yeah. the last time we recorded, that's and he got a better day. OLED than what he paid for. He sure oh did. My goodness, yes. it changed everything. Yeah, I love this thing. It, it changes everything. Yeah, yep. It really does. Like I, like I, I've, you know, I, I bought my TV a few years back, my my Sony one, I, and I saw the improvement. I was like, "Whoa, this is, this is this is the the real deal." Jumping now, like. Jumping into Ratchet, <laughs> it was <laughs> it melted my brain because I was like, okay, both of these screens were are 4K. This one's just OLED. How big of a difference is get? And it's like, oh my god, yeah. it's like yeah. that 8K that the Sony box says. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. it's like a whole different experience. Um, mesmerized by. How by the way, can I make is. fun of myself for a second, please? Yeah. So you guys will uh, want viewers to get a laugh at this. So I get the new. G1, like we said, I've got a 2021 G1, set it up. Um, as I told you, Joe, I'm like meticulous with this stuff, right? I'm burning in the colors and setting up all my settings on pro calibration settings and stuff. So I get it all configured. It's got the new models like yours, Joe, the 2021 have the specific game mode with VRR and support yeah. for everything, right? All the game stuff and a very low input latency so that when you're gaming, you know, it's like instant. I get that all configured, right? Like three weeks ago, me and my wife watched a movie and I switched it back to the other mode I have configured for HDR movies because game mode does detract from image quality a little bit, right? Yeah. And I'm like a stickler. So we're in the Halo Infinite preview this weekend. Played it Thursday night, played it Friday night. We get to like halfway through Saturday night and I think it was Mo or Pomp or one of the guys goes, Ains, how's that game mode working out for you? And I was like, Holy shit, I don't have game mode on. <laughs> I hadn't been playing games in game mode for like three weeks. Yeah. And I switched over to game mode and I knew it would make a difference. Like it it was incredibly noticeable how much mm-hmm. more precise Halo Infinite felt in the game mode with the input, you know, the boost on for input latency. I like instantly became more accurate. It was uncanny. And I'm yeah, more it's, on. it's so fast that it took getting used to. Like mm-hmm. Again, yeah, the response I, time is like it, honestly, I couldn't believe it made that much of a difference. Like, yeah. yeah. And here's As the thing too. I'm sorry, go for it, Luke. God no, you, it. you. I'm I just have an ending. No, I'm just joke trying here. to. Oh, do the ending <laughs> joke. Oh, um. As a reminder to listeners who don't have OLEDs, you got two kidneys. That's true. It's fair. It's fair. You, you don't, don't need, need both one of them. them. You don't yeah. need oh, both. Oh, you don't need both. Huh. No. Go for it. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you need both. Yeah. Yeah. No, come on, you can make do. Or just new For ones. Um, this young generation, bunch of pansies. <laughs> I think he's like 67, Sonny. Anyway, so no, I, I just want to say it's also really impressive that it, it kind of it's it's kind of funny how we're in this this first year of consoles. It's kind of similar to last generation of consoles where it really is the indie and smaller experiences that are really driving the experiences for the these next gen games uh and and one of the highlights for me being death's door like yeah let's just, talk about it like returnal hitman ratchet and all of a sudden death's door are my games that are going to be fighting for the end of the year uh mm-hmm. for my game of the year and it's just it's really I don't know. It's really cool to me, uh, Luke. I know you're a big, you're bigger into indies than I am. How are you feeling about it? About the about Death Door specifically, or just the year? Oh, the year. The, the year. Um, I could could not be more impressed with with a, the indie space this year because the pandemic absolutely slammed AAA studios. It just slammed AAA studios. They didn't have the infrastructure set up for uh, development at the levels that they were trying to operate. That's why we've seen so many AAA games delay from their original dates. 
Uh, but indie games or indie studios, many of them work from home anyway, or were working very locally and it was very easy. They weren't like sacrificing a, a lot to work at home. So a lot of their development wasn't as impacted, as impacted, right? I'm sure there was plenty of stuff there. Um, and it feels a lot like to me, the launch of the PlayStation four, which is, a, I didn't do both systems at launch in the last generation. I only did PlayStation mm. four and PlayStation literally had a campaign. PlayStation loves indies. And I played so many indie games at the launch of that system. And in many ways, I feel like that's what's happening right now with my, my Series X uh, and my PlayStation 5. In that many of the AAA games I'm playing are really just carryovers from the end of Xbox One PS4. And Death Store is absolutely a game of the year contender. I had the privilege of talking to the team, which was a highlight of the year for me in terms of interviews. Uh, it... It and several others just stand out as to be special and fun. And there's more to come. The Ascent just launched. I haven't played enough of it. Ains played a, a good bit of it for review. Um, we're just been treated to a lot of great games and more on the way. And that's mm -hmm. cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, Death Store's, Death Store's special. I, I said on XEP, I'm about 60% of the way through it. Um, I actually got home from vacation, started it immediately because uh, Cloud, who reviewed it for us, gave it a 9 and I said, it's the first game he's ever given a nine for us. Mm. Um, so I, I knew, you know, he really, really enjoyed it. And I've seen nothing but praise for it. So I started it, really enjoyed it. But then I, I had to review The Ascent and uh, then Halo came. So I haven't gotten back to it yet, but I, I will soon. I'm looking forward to finishing it. But I, I mean, you're not the only guys I've talked. Uh, many that we talk to in the community have it as like their game of the year or one of the best games so far. And to your point, I mean, Ascent, um, you know, I, I gave it a seven, which... I would like to remind people means it's a good game. It's a good game. Seven is not a bad score. Um, so it's a good game. There's fun to be had there. Uh, we've got games like uh, Psychonauts 2 looks amazing. Uh, it's getting a lot of praise already from early previews. We got 12 minutes coming out soon, which looks incredible. Um, what am I forgetting? I mean, there's just a ton of, a ton of good indies that are uh, either coming or on the way. And um, yeah, you're right. It's kind of outside of these, handful of tent pool triple a releases indies have been what we're playing from one week to the next and mm -hmm. not to talk about it because i know we do all the time but it, it honestly has been a boon for game pass as well because a lot of them you get to play through game pass and some of them you might not even known about mm -hmm. um you know uh so I, like art of rally the art of rally is a uh, rally racing game that's coming i think next week to game mm -hmm. pass that i've been waiting on um mm -hmm. and if you're like you know car racing guy it looks fantastic um, so, but there's just, there's tons of experiences like that. Uh, have you guys tried, uh, what's the one that just came out that's getting praised to Omno? I've not I've played, played Omno, Omno, but I've heard about it. How's okay. Omno? It's all right. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sorry I brought it up. F you, Joe. No, Damn. no, no, no. I, I, I actually, <laughs> item. I, I, item. <laughs> I got it on PSN, um, okay. and it's a really easy three hour plat. So okay. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate what it's trying to do. It's trying to give you journey vibes. Okay. Um, it's just the earlier level, early levels, like the first three aren't really great. They're okay. kind of slow. Well, it's actually, I feel like the last three areas that if that okay. was the entire game yeah. would have been way higher for me. It's, it sits at about a seven. It's a good game. Good game. Um, and for 18 bucks, uh, at least on the PSN, uh, around there, 18, 20, probably by the time this goes up, um, definitely worth it. It's, you know, like, like, like our good friend, was it, uh, <laughs> what did the, the guy over at Gearbox state today? It's only 20 bucks. Oh, so yeah, I, uh, I didn't hear about this. Throw a, a tender their way. And, uh, yeah. what a terrible tweet that support was. a single dev. Um, know, so. But There's we've also, got, uh, you know, Keen is coming, which not, I mean, poof, yeah, it, it's, that seems almost like double A, right? It's not a tiny mm -hmm, team, yeah. but uh, That's the it thing. looks fantastic. I, I got a question because yeah. like Kina is a great example. First off, Trophy Room, we have a preview of it. Humble brag. You should check it out. <laughs> but the, what is indie? Like, what is the is definition point? of? I don't think there is, is one a, anymore. I, I mean, it, it technically stands for it was independently published, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it just, yeah, it's so hard to define because there's so many games nowadays. I think, I think people refer to any game that's not a AAA title as indie. Yeah. So, so 
interesting take on that question uh, for me, Joe, because like we started the year with a game called uh, Cyber Shadow. I don't know if you guys remember. It was very much like Ninja Gaiden, very good indie game made by yes. like one dude. Yep. Um, I stopped playing it because they they did the obnoxious thing where he had like achievement points of ranked two and three points. And, uh, I'm on playing uh, it's like playing a, a Dark Souls 2D uh, kind of homage right now that did the same thing. I got an achievement like three minutes in. And it was for eight points, and I was like, oh. Come on. Yeah, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. But that started the year. Uh, And then through this year, we've also seen double A games. And I'm thinking about Biomutant right now. I was going to say Biomutant was only 20 people. Well, okay, so that helps me very much because I just interviewed the team behind uh, Blightbound, which is published by Devolver. That uh, started as a very small team and ended up in the above 20 range. Uh, as well meanwhile there's another game coming out called residual one person developer uh and then uh our our kind of in the community joe winter making song of iron he worked on halo and everything else song of iron one of the bigger indies of this year uh just one guy antonio lewis making 12 minutes he's been on xcp humble brag uh (laughs) one guy i don't know where the line is yeah i I don't know where the line is I, I'm looking through our reviews this year because we do a lot of indie games and I'm seeing other ones too that I've forgotten about. Like Battle Axe was a, it's a throwback to uh, Golden Axe from the Sega days, but that's very mm-hmm. highly reviewed. Uh, Narito Boy um, mm-hmm. was a Game Pass game, but uh, another Space very studio. What up? <laughs> there you go. Um, so just another, you know, um, very highly rated game. I'm trying to just look through Gods Will Fall, another high rated game. There's, there's a lot. Indie- but long story the- short, there's a lot. Two indies that kind of hit Game Pass recently. One's name, one's called Blood Roots. I've not played it. Looks really good. Looks I don't know good. I have it downloaded. Yeah. Uh, and Raji, an ancient tale. That's from an yes. Indian studio. Yes. That's... And very highly regarded as well. Yeah. And it's weird to me that in, in a year where releases are slower, there are, there are yeah. indie and double A studios. I don't know why you're laughing, but I missed something. Ains and I are on a break. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Keep, it going, keep going. It's colors. not you, Luke. It's you not wouldn't you. get it. You wouldn't okay. get it. All right, all right. I'm, I'm um, glad that Ains was about to break where I was about to break. What's we'll <laughs> yeah, your answer in the show? You're fine. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. So the idea is that these in there are so many good indie games showing yeah. up that I can't get to them all, and I try to either play or buy indies with regularity with regularity. Now that I'm in the financial position, I wasn't in four, five, six years ago. Right. And that's a weird thing that I just like Raji. I want to play you. I don't think it's happening for a while. Right. I just don't think it's happening. And then that's a, a, an odd thing, but they're doing, there's so many good games coming through. Yeah. Yeah. So many good games. I got home from vacation Two weeks Go ago, and I, so, and I downloaded eight games off a of Game Pass. Well, seven games off a of Game Pass and cool. Death Store. Um, that you know, you, I, you just named most of them, but there's just so many, and there's more coming soon. It's just, it's endless. But what I am thankful for, I don't know about you guys, and Joe, I'm sorry to interrupt what you were about to say. All I was going to mm-hmm. add was that um, it it feels like um, at least in some vein. There's more indies than ever, but more of them are breaking through into kind of the mainstream uh, awareness. Whereas I think, you know, a lot of indies go by the wayside and get missed. Yeah. And like speaking of like shout out to Raji, because I think I saw a friend of the show, Doc Brook, play it a few months back. And I was looking at it. I was like, oh, this is a great little game that I am not in the position of Luke. I, I don't have I'm not a millionaire teacher like like you know the easiest job in the world not all of us can live like luke exactly i paid off school everyone it took me 15 years all right (laughs) (laughs) but uh no like like and and i was like i'd love to play it but i don't know if i have you know the the financial backing too and because it's on game pass i'm gonna be able to just check it out and uh and and i really I, i really dig that i love that Indies are being taken more seriously, where we're starting to ask these questions of what is truly an indie game? Because mm-hmm. there are games like Death Store that don't really do anything in terms of showing that next gen power, but are so good that it's rivaling these games, at least in my head, that mm-hmm. are giving me the quote unquote next gen, you know, feeling. And that's that's just awesome to see that 
there's these small teams that are just crafting literal masterpieces. And when we take a look at like, yeah, is Hades an indie studio? I wouldn't say that anymore. Super giant. Yeah, they've big. grown. Yeah. Like, is Death Store technically ba- backed by a, a big quote unquote indie publisher? Um, you know, it's just. Death Store was two people plus a couple others that, that yeah. helped. Um, so it's 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 really cool to see man it's we're in an awesome place in video games and we mm-hmm. get caught in the monotony that is the twitter discourse that i think we we ought to br- try to break through it because yeah there there have been fantastic indie games that for me i was not a connoisseur of the indies like my co-host kyle but now there are just these stellar experiences that are opening you can't my ignore mind's them. Eye to more. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're a man of culture, you'll know that like there are indies and games such like as myself. Uh, such as yourself. That's right. You and are and you Mr. are Ainsley Bowden. Ains, you are also you. a man of culture, and I appreciate that. I do. Um I try to uh never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> certain indie games have had various celebrity like inputs here and there, and I'm thinking about uh Patrick Stewart was in This War of Mine, I believe. Is it this war of mine? He was in one of the the war narrative ones, and then volume had Andy Circus. Meanwhile, we've got twelve minutes this year. Yeah. Indie game: William Defoe, uh, yeah. Professor X from the Future, James Daisy McAvoy, Ridley. Daisy Ridley, Ray herself. Yeah. Ruined Star Wars, by the way. You can't I give mean, a girl a lightsaber. Whoa, I don't know how you can do it. Uh, it's outrageous! It's outrageous! I mean, shout out to Bryce Dallas <laughs> Howard and Maquette. Like, yeah. What is this? I don't know about this one. Maquette. Oh, Maquette. See, there's another game I didn't get around to playing. I have it installed. What is it? What is it? She How directed it? A, a Star Wars Mandalorian. Maquette, I think it's M A U U E T T E. E T T E. E T T E. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a game that was on um, PSN Plus back maybe March, April, Joe. Yeah. Easy little so, puzzler. Easy yeah. little puzzle. Uh, e- Again, hmm. another one you could beat in like two, three hours. Platinum. And okay. Hours. And Bryce Dallas Howard was involved in that. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She directed a Star Wars Mandalorian, two episodes. Yeah. 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 She's gonna that's direct cool. an Obi Wan. I don't know if you know this. She's gonna direct an. I've heard. Of, I've heard of such things. But that's kind of the cool thing. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. So this is an Annapurna Interactive related game. That's right. Indie, but is it? And that I think it just goes to show how evolved our medium now is. And this war for the indies of, you know, everybody wants to be on Switch because that's what sells the most. But really, Game Pass is going to give you the optics. Sony's got the install base. is going to PS Now, Game Pass, PS Plus. PS Plus is a great, by the way, great place to get good indies. Uh, from the beginning of PS4 through, we've seen good indies arrive. Uh, Fall Guys had its heyday because of PlayStation Plus. Rocket League. Game Rocket, Rocket League. League. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's just uh, it's. I mean, what was the first one they launched on PS4? Because it really kickstarted the great Re- indie. Rezo Gun. Rezo Gun. Thank you. Oh God, the music in that game is unrivaled. Yeah, House um, Mark. House Mark does special stuff, and that I mean, look at that from Re- from Rezo Gun and Stardust HD to Returnal. Well, they went to Next Machina. Yeah, they had like you know they had like 10, 15 people on Rezo Gun. Went to like thirty on Next Machina. Now they're nearly a hundred person studio with Returnal. Yeah. So not indie at all. Good. Not now. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's called organic growth. <laughs> organic. People. That's organic. Organic growth. growth for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Here in the Xbox yeah, community, we buy our this. studios. We buy That's our right. studios. If we sale. want it, we buy it. We buy. Ain't no problem want. with it. You slap a stick on it. I say I buy <laughs> all of the Bethesda's. Hashtag Sorry. acquisitions. Halo Infinite yeah. was suffering. I bought it software. Immediately, the guns are better right the there. The guns are better right there and there. Look at, look at, Halo couldn't be open world. We bought an Elder Scrolls. Now it's open world. <laughs> <laughs> you think you've seen something? You wait till That's that right. there avowed. Oh, my God. That's right. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. That's right. Game Pass Kids, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> Game Pass Kids are what's for dinner? <laughs> That's right. We eat them up. This yeah. stu- gobble, gobble, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yo, shout out to PlayStation Now and, uh, uh, for existing, and yeah. Games with Gold for both getting good games for once. They yeah, really nailed isn't it. Isn't that crazy? Are you subscribing <laughs> to PlayStation Now for those games? 
No, I, I am. <laughs> I am. I, gosh darn it, I am. No, I got. Not. I I I I'm playing Gravity Rush on the trophy room for the trophy room. Okay, we played that about to plan it all, dude. And thanks to PS Now, and then who knows next month. Maybe I play an ear. Maybe I get to attracted to a sexy robot lady. Maybe I play Ghost Runner, get attracted to a sexy robot ninja man. Who knows? Okay. First, I've always wanted to be into Gravity Rush. I had it on Vita, couldn't at the time play it. Yeah. That game looks so cool. I'm really sad it didn't land where it should have. And partially yeah. my fault because I didn't play it. Um, and two, PlayStation Now, the most confusing freaking service, because you said I'm playing it on now. I'm like, oh, how's that streaming? And then I'm like, oh, wait, so you can download PS4 games, but yeah. not three, right? Yep, 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 yep. Oh, that service needs fix. to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could buy that game for a handful it's, of it, dollars and not worry yeah. about PS Now, but... Well. Yeah, how about you go <laughs> suck an egg? <laughs> I think it's a decent service. I don't think it's... There's obviously it needs work. It's not as good as... It. Uh, game pass. It reminds me of the expandable storage for the PlayStation 5. It's fine. It's a solution. <laughs> it could be better. <laughs> What's wrong, Joe? Did you die a little inside just now? Xbox expansion pass. Four stars on iTunes, kids. <laughs> four. Being a little generous there, boss. Joe hates it. Maybe this week. Maybe You're this, right. They got Ainsley Bowden Maybe in this there. week's episode. <laughs> Yo, real talk. Okay, I want to... Yeah. I wanna, Real brag for a minute because okay. XCP is a passion project. I do it solo, right? Sure. Um, I'm on. Ep- I just did episode ninety three. I've been banking interviews, building up because I'm going to be very busy this fall. Um, so I've got like four or five in the bank, which is really cool. But that is a show that I've had the chance to to have so many different creators now on with the new format and interview so many people like Death Store, like Twelve Minutes. Uh, and, and like so many other games that are coming out and, and are already out. And I really hope more people are able to check it out because I really would like that sure. thing to, 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 uh, I don't want, I don't want to be like famous, but I would like more people, more eyes on it. But I feel like I'm doing a, a really good job with XEP. Um, and I hope more people will check it out because I'm approaching episode 100 and I feel like that's a big deal, you know? Well, I'm glad you think that way. Thanks, thanks. I was talking to Ains. I was talking to Ains. <laughs> no, Ains. I think uh, you know. I'll be dead serious for a second. Um, I, I I agree with you. Um, I know we've talked offline about this, but I really do think that your show is unique, um, and it does something that is more unique and more interesting, at least to me, which probably doesn't do much for you because I'm not worth much. <laughs> uh, but it's more interesting to me than the vast majority of the same kind of regurgitation of echo chamber comments we get on a weekly basis on a lot of shows. So uh, I, I've always told you to keep doing what you're doing. Um, and I hope you continue to see growth because it's awesome. Thanks, man. Or maybe you just said this week. Just just quit. Just be done. <laughs> just, just, just call it. <laughs> quit in 99, you know, just yeah. 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 Stuff. like, ah, yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Was done. I, absolutely. And Ains, can I say, can I give you your show uh, compliments? Uh, well, you can in one second. I just got notified oh, by Dan, breaking news, that South Korea has identified a new variant of coronavirus. They are naming Delta Plus, which <laughs> experts believe is even more transmissible than the original Delta variant. So that'll make you sleep well tonight. Anyway, that's cool. I didn't need another panic attack, but that urge just went right <laughs> Yeah, <through>. man. <laughs> I'm trying to like celebrate this milestone. Hope people will listen to my show. You got a fucking between Disney good shows Plus and comments where Delta Plus, you know? Yeah, oh, my goodness gracious. Get vaccinated for God's sake. Sorry. I was in Florida last week. <laughs> Just <beyond> whoa, whoa. <laughs> you should probably We're automatically quarantine. I am the Delta variant. <laughs> oh no. But honestly, shout out to, to Bitcast because I love the, the new iteration so far. And yeah. Travis is a great yeah, addition congrats. as well. I think Travis is a great fit. Uh there's more changes to come, like I told you guys. There's uh we've got a little more work to transition it to where I want it to be, but we're getting there. So Joe, did you get an invite? To the new transition of any kind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we talked about this last time, but I just want to like really you got it. you two have been on the show more than anybody <laughs> else. <laughs> I'm just saying that like I would have said no. I would have also would have said no. Nice. I just <laughs> yeah. wanted to be able to say uh-huh. no. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I I um question, what were the new games of gold? Because I don't ever um, let me pull it. I, it I know actually wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad. It was Lost Planet 3, 
Okay. Um, and Lost Planet series is pretty darn cool, all things considered. Darksiders three, which is very mixed in terms of how people feel about it. Yeah. Um, Darksiders three, okay. But but I really like Darksiders three. Uh, oh gosh, Ains, I, hell, I'm looking literally at okay, bad bad website design. I'm looking right at it, and it's not telling me. Mm -hmm. Just go through. I'm about to click up, uh, click ahead. But Darksiders three and Lost Planet three were the the ones that okay. were standing out as being good games with gold. Well, the third one couldn't be great if you don't remember it. Well, Honestly, it's one of those the things, only reason like, I, I don't already own it. Off my head is because I don't cover games of gold on season gaming. Ukulele, ukulele, that's it. Uh, oh, which excellent. ukulele? I'm, um, you know, I'm a big, big proponent of platformers and banjo coming back. Ukulele was a good game, but mm -hmm. if you're gonna play a ukulele, play the second one, which is called the like Endless Layer. I'm forgetting the name. It's mm -hmm. a 2D platformer instead of ukulele. It is fantastic. Uh, very mm. underappreciated. And then the other game was, um, oh, uh, the fighting game, Mark of the Wolves, which yeah. is, oh. I, I, I don't know much about it, but for fighting game fans, uh, Guru is, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, is supposed to be excellent. So Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so and good to see that because I'm of the mind that Games of Gold needs to go away. Yeah. Uh, and yet. This is a little better. This is a little better. better. Yeah. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Like, if I'm hey somebody guys. who only has. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, listen, I think we've hit all the topics okay. this week. And I Damn. think we've hit, done a really great job. I think Joe we just have. jumped in and cut the show. He's we like, didn't yeah, get to raise the trophy room. We don't need to. All right. Go we ahead. don't need to because it's our, we already, we don't, we already well, know. No, you're hitting milestones. You're yeah. hitting milestones. Yeah, and I'm real proud of you. I'm real proud yeah. of you because you've been busting your butt with it. Um, you, uh, you, you did the podcast circuits. You're working hard to make sure it's on feeds. You're always yeah. uh, checking the best optimizations. You teach me a lot about podcasting. Probably why I'm not where I am. But you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, but you know what happened? You. Thank you. You know what happened this week? Because one thing that you must know about me, everyone, is that like I don't. I, I used to be a YouTuber. I don't claim that I am anymore. I'm a podcaster. YouTube is just a separate thing onto itself. So I don't focus on it as a metric because it wasn't making me happy. Um, so when I switched to podcasting, I wanted to study what makes podcasts successful. So the one thing that I always bore Kyle with is I like listening to podcasts about podcasts. Um, that because I'm a sociopath, apparently. And so this week, all of a sudden, we were reaching really big highs, just constantly like it seemed like every episode was just outpacing. And then this week episode, it was just like, and eh, we're gonna flounder. And it gave me a panic attack really bad. I was like, uh oh, everybody, my imposter syndrome was right. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm imploding. And I didn't know this. But uh, good old fashioned pod beans been lying to me about my numbers for a very long time. Mm. And actually a lot bigger than I thought I was. So that's always great to see. That was a really nice surprise. And maybe, and this is another part of me, I'm just looking at that statistic wrong. But wow, thank you all for uh, truly listening. I, I, I put out a thing at the end of the Halo beta on the trophy room because I thought it was important. We often see way too much bullshit. Yeah, dude, that blew Xbox up, which accounts. was awesome. Yeah, like, uh, uh, bleh, Horizon sucks, look at Aloy, she's not as attractive. And then you see, like, PlayStation folks going, oh, look at the Master Chief, he looks like a dumb astronaut. Um, <laughs> it's just, like, constant bull crap. And the one thing that I try the hardest with the trophy room to be is we cover PlayStation, but we have to spread positivity because there's just too much nonsense. So I was very happy to see our halo uh, 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 tweet uh, blow up in the way it did. And I really do hope that some of the devs over at 343 saw that and saw mm -hmm. and got maybe a little, a little happy by it, you know? Um, yeah. Because their work shouldn't go unnoticed. Even if it's not our main ecosystem, we should be praising those folks. They're giving us these experiences. Games are the most complicated art form, if you think about it. You know, it's got a little bit of everything in there. You're interacting with this thing and it shouldn't even exist. And yet it does. And mm -hmm. we lose track of that when we're arguing about SSDs or optics in a controller, all of that. We lose sight of it. What makes games great is when they just get us lost in that world, like a death store or a halo, mm -hmm. you know? Agree. Yes, I do know. Hardly agree. Uh, so Boy. I guess keep casting that co-op. <laughs> I think wait, it's wait, that wait. Time. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> First of all, you didn't even get the proper thumbs up. 
But second of all, didn't Luke, didn't we have a couple comments or something of people asking us questions? I thought there you go. Uh, we sure did. I felt like I, I referenced one or two something. of them uh, <laughs> when I brought up Song of Iron because I know uh, Stubbs Gaming wanted us to mention that one. And that was really cool. Uh, Death Store we talked about from JMO Money. Good to have you uh, listening. Captain Logan said. Uh, they definitely made some odd choices with that system. He's talking about the PS5. They wanted big and f- they wanted it big and flashy, and it excels at that. Not having it expanded storage day one was a mistake. It's the software I think is more messed up. Xbox is just beating them in convenience with their OS. Um, I understand where Logan's coming from with the software part, but I feel like it, it, they just it's pandemic stuff. They had some good software at the, the beginning. There's going to be this this lull. Which, I mean, fine, we've had plenty of holidays where one of the, or two, or even three of the console makers rely on third party for stuff. Um, and Xbox just happens to have nothing at the beginning of this 2021, and a lot of good stuff towards the end of it. Uh, 2022 will be really where we see the war, I think, taking place. Yeah, I, I agree. Usually PlayStation doesn't have anything holiday, unless you're launching a PS5 or Spider-Man in early September. But they mm-hmm. usually don't rely on exclusives. I think the one time they did was with Death Stranding, and that blew up in their face. So, yeah, uh, PlayStation games do better when the spotlight is on them, and they get to own that week. Which they is, have is, software by way of director's cuts coming out, though, yeah. right? Ghost of Tsushima in August, Death Stranding in September. Um, but I, I think PlayStation games they're able to get the spotlight because they launch in these times that are not the holiday that they get that spotlight on them mm-hmm. and, and people look at it and that's why it, it astonishes me when i see like ghost of Tsushima is selling so well in the middle of july mm-hmm. you know um so yeah i went to, i went to continue my ghost of Tsushima uh playthrough a couple months ago and my save's not there so again fantastic love it Appreciate Shout it. out to PlayStation, the best engineered thing. <laughs> it's a ma- there's nothing wrong with it, actually. <laughs> it was just like you want to experience this fresh, don't you? So you know, <laughs> start over. Start over. Right. <laughs> they they do need to uh, clean up some of their infrastructure for sure. Like yeah, dumb, dumb I think delivery. we've talked about it before. I think the PS5 was a reset in that regard. Like mm-hmm. it's PS5 going forward now. You know what I mean? They, they've yeah. changed that foundation. But anyway, anything else? I think that's it, boys. You can find uh, me on Twitter at Insipid Ghost. You can find the Xbox Expansion Pass on all your podcast services, including YouTube. Ains? You can find us at Season Gaming. Uh, I always tell people everything you need is there. You can find me on Twitter as Ains. It's very easy because there's like none of us uh, that are named Ainsley because it's a weird name and nobody names their children Ainsley for the most part, sure. except for new baby girls uh, uh according to the 2020 census which is depressing uh and exciting at the same time i don't know why i just said all that but you can find me on twitter and find us at season gaming <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> Ains, you want to talk about anything else buddy you sound like you need to talk you need okay all right. and, uh you know keep 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 driving that bus keep driving that bus <laughs> <laughs> That broke me. <laughs> oh, you can find me over at the Trophy Room PlayStation Show uh, video version <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, it's where each and every Thursday, me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest and the greatest in all things PlayStation. Uh, and yeah, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get your RSS feed or podcast service of choice. You can find the show there. So. By the way, shout out to Apple to suddenly changing BitCast to a logo that I haven't used in over three years. They're awesome. <laughs> Apple st- hasn't updated mine in a year and a half. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> they had a, a system-wide bug for two months. Didn't tell anybody. <laughs> it's great. It's great yeah. there. Yep. No my, problems. My description on Apple still says Project Scarlet. Which is really frustrating. <laughs> and I'm trying to, like, I'm really hopeful to get into the top 10 Xbox podcasts of somehow, so I want to be on some list somewhere. It's important to me. And meanwhile, Apple's like, you know, he does Project Scarlet, and it's like the logo is purple. And I'm like, what is that? What filter did you run that through? I haven't seen, I've never had a purple logo. Guys, yeah, are we gonna, are we here to set up a meeting to fight Tim Cook head on? Yeah. I'm down. 
I'm I'll down. fight him right there. We're, he looks pretty we're frail. We're invading the mother base. <laughs> we're going to fight Tim Cook and uh, the executives of Activision. Let's do this. Oh. Actually, Activision one's first, and we got to go for the ankles, work our way up with them. Pats, <laughs> whacking Fair. their shins. That's what we're going to do. I'm absolutely down to that. <laughs> well, everybody, keep, 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 uh, keep, um, Keep ca- keep Cast keep cast co-op. keep cast that co-op. You suck. I think your stutter is getting longer every week. It is getting it is. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like even mention still, still we didn't okay. even mention that this was our tenth episode the whole time. <laughs> That's par for the course. That's-